kidding me? We just got here. My name is Jack Bodwin. I'm 27 years old. I'm a filmmaker, photographer, and most importantly, I'm a fisherman. In the last five years, I've shot everything from weddings to gigs from Mountain Dew to touring the world with Grammy-nominated R&B singers and musicians. Through my early 20s, I don't think I knew anyone that hustled harder than me. And that's not to say that I was the best photographer by any means, but I mean, I would have seven to ten emails out before sunrise every morning. You know, whether it was to a local clothing company, an artist management team, you know, whatever it was, I was hustling day in, day out, sunrise, sunset, trying to make it happen. I was loving it. I had the ball rolling, everything was going really well. Until about three years ago, um, I lost my mom to an autoimmune disease called scleroderma and she also developed bone cancer, and they gave her about a month to live after that diagnosis. That's about what it was. And it seemed like as quick as she was taken, you know, all my motivation to do anything was gone, especially create photos and videos. I mean, to be in a spot like I was in, and force yourself to be creative, it just doesn't work. After she died, I didn't pick up a photo camera for almost an entire year, which even still saying out loud right now, it was just, it just blows my mind. To have a passion that gets you motivated to get out of bed and grind as hard as I would grind every day, and lose it that fast, I mean overnight, gone, didn't care folded, done. That was, next to losing my mom, probably the scariest thought imaginable. So the winter after my mom had passed, my friend Chris who was a super talented fly fisherman, asked me if I wanted to go ice fishing on my lake just because it's so convenient. I'm like, yeah, sure, I've never ice fished before. I've actually kind of thought about it a few times. Uh, never had the opportunity to do it, so. Um, me, him, and a few friends came up, and we were super pumped, had all the gear ready to roll. I was confident because I knew Chris at least knew what he was doing. And we fished the whole weekend and caught absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, it was, it was tough. From that day forward, it was a wrap. Like, if you were to come over my house from the winter of 2017 to the winter of 2018, you would find me on my computer, on YouTube, learning every single thing I possibly could. I became the biggest sponge for fishing ever. All I wanted to do was get back out there. I've got a, a friend named Matt who is an avid angler as well big stream guy, you know, traveled to Alaska uh, in his crazy 87, 88 Suburban. Sorry, he's probably gonna kill me if I get the, the year wrong. And, you know, me and him, if we had fished a couple times and we had hung out and you know, mutual friends growing up through high school but never really knew each other. Long story short, we had 
talked on social media, I think Instagram, about fishing for, for the fall, and he had told me about this trip that he was doing, and basically said exactly what I had planned on doing, you know, river hopping, all the streams we could find in, on Lake Superior, and, and just fish, and camp, and live off, live off what we catch, and, you know, just have a good time getting after on the water. <laughs> I like being outside and like this is something that keeps me outside more than any other activity I've ever done. I don't know what it is. I really can't describe it. I tried to get a lot of my friends into fishing. A lot of them have gotten into fishing. Some of them try it and they just, they don't develop the like for it. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's kind of like when I ride a motorcycle or I drive a car and I spend a lot of time on the road, your brain kind of like you go into like a, a meditation and that's kind of like fishing too. Fall is the best time. Everything looks beautiful. You got all the leaves. If you like to fish, that's like the best time. You got trout, salmon run, and there's no bugs. It's not too hot. It's not that cold yet. I mean, it gets cold, but it's it's not as bad. I mean, it's, it's easily the best season we have here. Just to fish in scenery like that is a blessing in itself. I mean, it sounds corny, but it, it, it it's real. There's something about being next to running water and peak fall colors in Michigan. I mean, it really, it doesn't get much better than that. And the fish is just a bonus. So fast forward to September, I drive up to Matt's property, met up with him and a few of his buddies. Didn't really waste any time. You had that feeling that you're you're doing something big. You're doing something new. you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. You're creating a really, really, really cool memory. And I think we all, we all knew that. stop so we got there show up I knew I wasn't waiting for anyone like you know everyone's getting ready at their car and stuff that, that wasn't me I was like I'm gonna get my stuff I'm gonna get my spinner tied up I know what I'm going out there with and I was there before I'd even gotten out of the car Matt was basically running down to the hole I don't even know where I've never been to this river before he has and I'm like where do we even go you always psych yourself up for a fishing trip and it, you know, sometimes every time I've psyched myself up, it doesn't go how I planned. But like, I got to the one spot that I remember having action at the year before. Like, this spot I threw in, first cast, I saw a fish. I thought it was just like a little trout. You know, but I was excited. So eventually, we find the the mouth of the river, and you know, Matt's Matt's down there casting. And I walk past him, and I get set up in um, you know a little little run that I wanted to. To start picking apart and before I swear before I even put my camera and my rod down this guy starts screaming it's like maybe two or three more casts and I felt it it was on and I knew it wasn't that first fish that I saw that small one it was something bigger and I'm fighting him and I'm fighting him and I'm screaming and I think you came down I sprint over there and I grab his net this coho that he hooked up with, man, was scrappy. I mean, he would see me three or four times and took off and was giving mad hell. I thought that fish was gonna be in, no problem. I didn't see how big it was. And dude, it just kept running on us and running on us. And he kept getting close and you'd have it like at the net. Uh, but we did eventually get him in, which was a miracle considering I have my big camera rig in one hand and the net in the other trying to film. And then he finally netted it, and I mean, I was, that, that made the trip, that was the whole trip. That's all it needed to be right there for me. Like, I could have gone home and been fine. And all I could think about was like, there's no putting this one back. Like, first fish, you don't know if you're gonna catch anymore. Like, we had it, processed it, and that was probably the hardest fight for me of that whole trip was that. And it wasn't the biggest fish that I caught either. It was probably the smallest fish of the trip, and man, that thing fought. We got one early, real early, and that was when I realized that we were we were in a real special place. You know, we weren't we weren't fishing our, our normal streams, and that kind of set the tone for the whole trip.
Next morning we get up, ended up splitting apart from Matt's two friends. So Matt and I leave uh, River A and then start to hit all these small trout streams. It was a few days before uh, trout season was closed, so we wanted to get in as much fishing as we could. I found this truck, it was a 88 Suburban, it was down in North Carolina. It's not rusty like we get up here in Michigan. It's like, this thing will be perfect. It'll hold us, it'll hold all the gear. It's got four wheel drive, it looks great. It was cheap, I picked it up. I drove from North Carolina to Michigan with my dad and it didn't skip a beat. So I knew right then and there, I was like, this thing, this thing's solid. So Matt with his giant Suburban wants to take this back roads deep in the sticks trail. It, it takes an hour to go three miles, which I'm cool with. I just, I haven't escaped. I heard about that road and I was like, I, I should probably check this out. I didn't, we didn't know if it was gonna go through or not. And then you were taking the escape. I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't know about this. Like, I, it's an escape. We're like good, and then throw We're almost fucking, you know. That was yeah. that, that, like, no, that, 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 that one. That one was the only one I was like, uh, I don't know about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. yeah. just went rock climbing in a fucking. It's sick. <laughs> 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 right, yeah. We got out of that trail, which was nice, because it was good to hit a trail, but like after about, I mean, we were on that trail for like two days. You get, you get enough of that, and it's like, okay, I'm sick of this. I just want to get there. We got to like regular two tracks, met up with Hammond at this bridge, which is just beautiful water. And we fished that for a while, but we saw a couple fish, but it didn't produce anything. We had another spot in mind. It was right on the beach. Matt had a camping spot in mind on the beach that was actually next to the mouth of the river that we were, we just got to. So we started driving there, Hamill was following us. 
So I'm following them and we get to this super, super beautiful campsite. Took it all in for about a minute or so and we, were, we grabbed our rods and we were, we were ready to go. No way! I can't remember if it was my first or like second cast. It was my first good whip out there, pulling in. And I didn't know if it was a, like, it's, you got the waves coming at you. You can hardly, when you surf cast, you can hardly tell. And I was like, man. And then I felt my drag going. I was like, oh, I got a fish. And I just started screaming. I was just in shock. I didn't even like. I didn't even know what to think. Like I didn't. I didn't expect I was even gonna land the things. I'd never caught. I'd never caught a fish like that from the surf. Right? He yelled off. I think like four different fish before we finally like saw it. And it was a steelhead, which is one thing I, I, I didn't have steelhead on my mind. You know, I was just thinking salmon, salmon or splake. So I throw my rod to the side. I'm like, all right, let's let's land this fish. And I go in the water a little bit, and um, the fish was super wrapped, so it kind of came in weird. It was just kind of floating there. So I scooped it up and handed Matt his absolutely gorgeous steelhead. At both like big salmon spots that I wanted to hit, I had action within five, ten minutes. It was insane. That was a hell of a catch. I know he was super pumped about it because he had never caught one out of the surf like that before, so just to be a part of that catch was, was cool. The next day was Nick, Matt, and I's last full day together. They had a DNR cabin booked in the Porcupine Mountains, so we headed to a trail in a river that was in that direction. It was the most beautiful place in Michigan I had ever been. We went out there with the hopes of catching our first splake, but after seeing this spot, I don't think any of us cared if that happened. Amazing the power that fishing has. We wake up hell bent to get on them, but at the end of the day, if we aren't given a fish, we are always given so much more. Just a chance to be outside with friends, casting a line in some of the world's most beautiful water is enough for me. The boys and I hiked back and headed to a campsite at the most northern tip of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Matt and I had met a super nice couple named Andy and Alexis earlier in the trip after we had gotten out of that crazy trail. They just so happened to be at the same campsite as us and were kind enough to cook us pancakes in the morning. Anyone who has camped for an extended period of time knows how big of a blessing any meal is that you don't have to prepare for yourself.
As beautiful as the UP is, you have to be prepared. Weather can turn quick. Cars can break down, far from any town, far from any cell service, and far from any hospital. God forbid any serious injury occurs. The solitude and isolation that drives us to be there can be the exact thing that turns a great trip into a nightmare. We had someone looking out for us though, because no matter what roadblock popped up in that two weeks, it was crossed with minimal effort or stress. It was time for the three of us to go our separate ways. The boys had about a four mile hike to their backwoods cabin, and I was on a mission to finally land my first salmon of the trip. You know, the spoon, the spinner just wasn't working for me. Like, let me. Let me grab the float rod and, you know, let's throw a bead on. Something I hadn't done yet that trip. Well, Matt, since I'm terrible at spin fishing, here you go. Let's get one on the float here. Oh my god, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Yes! First trip! First trip! First trip, baby! Yes! Yes! Oh, this is what it feels like to catch a fish first drift. Or go out there and, and catch one, you know, basically immediately upon getting to your spot. And I feel like that right now. Like, this is great. Oh my god, first trip. Oh my god, first trip. I gotta land this fish. I gotta land this fish. This one's on the Oh my god, No! 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. No way, bro. I think it was a steelhead. I never got a, a, a great look. I think it was a steelhead though. Man, I made the tiniest drag adjustment. You know, I got six pound line on. So I loosened my drag one click, probably three seconds after I made that adjustment. Hook pops out. I'm like, all right, that hurts but I'm doing something right. Same river just upstream a bit. First casting with a spinner and I hook up with a coho. And I lost that coho. But just like fishing always does, it hands you a little gift right when you are on the verge of throwing in the towel. And I caught my first ever splake. Just like this whole trip, 
Matt and I never had any inside intel on any of these rivers. We had never fished them before. We kicked it old school, pulled out a map, pointed to a river and said, that's where we're fishing today. Putting in the time, effort, learning, failing, exploring, just like it's supposed to be. Which is exactly how it came to find this next river. Waking up before the sun, being knocked down by losing two fish, finding a brand new river to put a line in, I finally had my first Lake Superior coho salmon. And no more than five casts later, my first Lake Superior steelhead. Revenge, dinner, whatever you want to call it, I was on top of the world. Four years ago, I couldn't even tie a blood knot, so to come up to the Mecca of fisheries and apply everything I've learned and turn it into a successful day on the water was about as full circle as it could get. I've been fishing this whole time, two weeks. I really wanted a split. So after fishing for a couple days, backtracking the rivers that me and Matt hit, uh, he was done with his hike and his stay at that cabin with, with Nick. So he calls me, he's like, hey man, like I'm, I'm gonna get a couple hours in at this, this river on the way home before I head back downstate if you want to meet up with me. I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, so I, I drove like four hours to, to get to this, this river with him. And Matt's main species that he wanted this entire trip was a splake. I've never caught one. And I knew that, that you know, we fished, we fished as far as you can get in Michigan. We went to the supposed splake capital of Michigan. You know, we tried, we tried our damnness up there. We did, all, we did everything we were told and we never even saw one. So I, was, I started to write it off. And then so I started making my way back. But I had this extra day, and I was thinking about that first river, you know, that started the whole thing. Started it the year before, and I was like, man, you know what? It's on the way home. I gotta fish there again. So I called you. I said, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be here tonight. You know, I'll probably be there in a couple hours. We could, you know, get to try the night bite. It was late. It was probably like 11 when you showed up, maybe a little later. And we went back down there, charged our spoons up. 
you know, walking down there not, not seeing anything because we got our lights on the spoons. So I'm glowing my spoon up with my light and I cast in, start reeling. We, we casted for like 20, 30 minutes maybe, and I was like, I'm, I'm done. Trip, we had a great trip. We caught some fish. It was awesome. I'm over it. I'll whip the spoon out here one more time. I'm gonna throw it as far as I possibly can. I mean, I'm throwing this thing, I'm throwing this thing to Canada. And just like every other time on this trip, I just hear Matt behind me in the distance yelling that he's got a fish on. No way. No way. No way. Come on, baby. I told you it was going to happen. I told you it was going to happen. Please don't come off. Look at that shit, dude. I got a fish. Oh, yeah, there he goes. Come on. Oh, watch that light. Oh, I wonder what it is. Sorry, I gotta put this in your face. It's cool. All right, let me see out there real quick. Yep. Fuck yeah. Dude, I said, I'm putting it way out. Oh, he's, he's fighting, he's fighting good. See if you can see him out there. Not on that GoPro, there's no way. Oh shit, look at it, look at it. Oh, it's right there, it's right there in the water. It's right there in the water. You wanna try? You know, it's pitch black, so I can't, you can't see out there, you can't see if the fish surfaces or what it is. So the, the mystery when you're night fishing like that is, you know, really cool. It adds something for sure. And I'm pulling it in and like, I, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I wasn't even thinking about what kind of fish it was. I just knew it was a fish. I just didn't want to lose it. And it felt pretty good, but we got it in pretty quick. And I remember you had, we didn't have a net again. You were like pushing it on shore. And I remember when you, you looked down and you were like, <gasps> feel it? Dude, you did it! Just flame! You did it! Yeah! You did it! Yeah. He got it! Yeah. He fucking Woo. got it! Yeah, baby! And it just seemed too good to be true. I mean, it was too movie-like. For for me to drive four hours just to fish for fish for 25 minutes with him, and for him to get that at night, throwing glow spoons into Lake Superior the species that he wanted more than anything, right before he goes home. I mean, what else could you possibly ask for? All I saw was shininess, and then got close, and I saw the green, I saw all the dots. And I, did, I couldn't tell if it was a laker at first yet. I saw the fish had a forked tail, and it was huge. I mean, it was over 20 inches, a beautiful fish. I knew it wasn't no rookie or anything like that. And then I saw the coloration on the fins and stuff, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a splake. Well, I, oh yeah, we just, we were screaming and yelling. Like that's, that was like the icing on the cake. That's all I wanted. That's, I, I wanted to get some salmon. I really wanted to get a splake. I don't know why. I like brook trout and it's just like a huge mutant brook trout really. And we finally did it. I mean, that was, it couldn't have ended any better. Like that was, it really couldn't have last cast. Like, I mean, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. That'll be like one of my favorite fishing stories forever. Until I go up to like, I don't know, somewhere like Northern Ontario or something, but for now, for a long time, that's gonna be my favorite fishing story. I mean, it was great. And we, we, we cooked a little that night, shared some with my dad, shared some with my friends here. That was great. That was my favorite fish I've ever caught. So my boy, Nate, who I actually went sturgeon fishing with with his family in Wisconsin, like, a couple weeks before I went out on this trip with Matt. He wanted to come out and get on some fish, and he lived in Nebraska, so he was driving all the way from Nebraska, 12 hours, to Michigan to try and get on a salmon. And I'm not a guide, you know, like I've only been doing this for a little bit, you know, I, I can fish, but to say that I'm confident enough to put somebody on a fish driving all the way from Nebraska? No. <laughs> that made me nervous. I didn't want to waste the kid's time, you know? That was just, that's a far drive to come and not, and not catch anything. We drove to the river that Matt and I met Nick at, 
and were met with a record-setting early snowfall and frigid 30-degree temperature drop. Not surprisingly, with a drastic weather change like that, the bite was beyond off. I figured we might have a better chance at a river mouse, so we pulled out a map and picked one. That's one of the best things about being from this state, and fishing in this state in general. The bite isn't happening at one body of water, you're a mile or two away from another opportunity. I felt bad because I wanted to get him on a fish, but I ended up hooking up with this Beautiful, beautiful male steelhead right into the surf, right at the mouth. I love watching a bobber go down. I love getting one on the fly, but there is something about that spoon bite, man. I mean, they just crush it. I'm yelling for Nate because he had started to climb the rocks to get back up to the to his car. I'm like, Nat, Nat. He's like, you need the net? I'm like, yes. I'm like, hurry. <laughs> so he makes his way down the rocks, which is no, no small task in itself. I really wanted it to be Nate that caught one, but just for him to, to see one in person, I think was motivation enough to, to go out there the next day and keep at it. We weren't in panic mode for Nate's first salmon yet, but I figured we should make our way to the Magic River, the river that started it all, as Matt said. I gave him the first casts into all the good holes that day and helped him in any way that I could, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't happening. This is a hot fish. This is fish going nuts. Oh my god, it's going nuts. Oh my god. It's probably a dark up, uh, colored up coho. Why is it getting so close to me? Yeah, it's that tannic color. That's pretty silver. That's a fucking steelhead. Wait, is that a steelhead or a coho? That's a steelhead. Uh, you want to hop in the water? Help me, please. <laughs> please, please. Please. Please, hurry. I was happy to catch another fish, but the only thing left to complete this trip was to get Nate his first salmon. And at this point, we were running out of time. Day four was our last full day of fishing before Nate was heading back to Nebraska. We hit two random rivers and then I took him to the spot that I caught my first two fish at. Nothing. Such a far way to come. 
such high expectations. Nate kept a great attitude though, but I know he was frustrated. He was heading back at 10 a.m. the next day with no fish to show for it. We wake up that morning and I'm, I'm exhausted, I'm beat. I've been fishing for 10 days. I'm like, listen, man, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't join you this morning, I, I gotta chill. So I gave him the net, uh, made him put the GoPro on his chest, just in case something happened, and uh, gave him a couple spinners. I'm like, you know, go, go give it one last chance, man. You owe it to yourself, you're about to drive 12 hours back home. Go, go give it one last chance, he's like, hell yeah. Jack Ryan, oh baby. Woo! Looks red car, just crushed it, right in the shore, just came out of nowhere. Come on, baby. Get the net, get the net. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Yes! <laughs> yes! Third cast, baby! Oh, my God. Third cast! Oh, my God. Third cast! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way! <laughs> yeah.